The annual FIDES week-long free university gathering in Transylvania has already begun. Over the years this event has acquired a rather unsavory reputation, mostly because Viktor Orban has used it to set out his forthcoming political agenda. It was here in 2014 that he announced his intention to establish an illiberal state in Hungary. The announcement was received with consternation and shock in Western democracies as well as by the domestic opposition to Orban's Fidesz party. It's hard to comprehend, but this is the 29th time that the aging, young Democrats are traveling to the heart of Transylvania, Bale Balvanos, Balvanos Ferdo, where during the day the mostly Transylvanian-Hungarian audience listens to lectures on assorted topics. My understanding is that these lectures are not exactly exciting. The place comes alive only in the evenings when the partying begins. Of course, the highlight of the week is Viktor Orban's speech on the last day which, judging from past experience, he gives to an older but enthusiastic, admiring crowd. In the past, although journalists from Budapest spent a whole week at Tisfondios in order to inform the public back home, there were slim pickings among the articles reporting on the discussion groups and lectures. But this year something unusual happened. Instead of the standard platitudes, praising the Orban government for its excellent leadership, there was a genuine debate over Fidesz cultural policy. It was surprisingly open, addressing questions about the state's role in matters of literature and culture. I'm not surprised that this exchange of views was not about domestic or foreign policy. There, government politicians can't hold opinions different from Viktor Orban's official views. Having differences of opinion on matters of cultural policies is less risky. Moreover, there is a tradition in modern Hungarian history that any burgeoning political dissatisfaction within the establishment is first expressed by writers and poets. It is enough to think of the three years preceding the 1956 revolution. The debate in Bale Balvanos, Balvanos Ferdo centered on whether the party, which captured the heart and soul of the electorate can force its own literary and cultural taste on society as a whole. I didn't write much about the full-fledged Kulturkampf that has been waged for months in the semi-official government paper, Magyar IDOK. I picked only one article from the scores that were written, mostly by two pugnacious promoters of the establishment, to advocate for a kind of old-fashioned party literature. Moreover, the piece I chose wasn't about the real substance of the debate but about the rejection of modernity and the return to tradition. Janos D. E. Akutenis Orban, or O. J. D. as he is known in Hungary, a poet, preferred Latin to computer science. But Orban has far more ambitious plans. He would like to develop, with active government assistance, a new literary elite loyal to the ideals of the illiberal state. Laszlo L. Simon, also a poet, who is currently a member of parliament and former undersecretary in charge of culture, and George Lee Prohal, former undersecretary of the foreign ministry, who is currently the director of the Petofi Irad Almi Museum, Petofi Literary Museum, argued against this position. In their opinion, if the political right wants to see a talented group of national writers, there are no real obstacles. If there is talent, the results will follow. Party loyalty doesn't supplant talent. Laszlo L. Simon, George Lee Prohal, and Janos D. E. Akutenis Orban, source, 444.hu, photo by Bodist OJD's view on the matter is simple, the overwhelming vote for Fidesz also means support for and acceptance of our cultural policies, so, political sympathies go hand in hand with literary and cultural sensibilities. Viktor Orban has been such a major political figure for so long that one can talk about an Orban era, just like Hungary had a, or the era, lasting for 25 years between the two world wars. The political leadership then had specific ideas about the kind of literature they found desirable, and they supported it generously. Yet, just to prove L. Simons and Pearls point the outstanding writers and poets of the period didn't come from the conservative writers favored by the successive governments. On the contrary, practically all the great ones were opponents of the Horthy regime. 
therefore, it is unlikely that artificial interference from above in matters of literature will succeed, although I see signs that the Orban government is sympathetic to OJD's ideas. Otherwise, the government wouldn't have given him 1.4 billion forints to create a state school of writers, which generously supports 80 new writers chosen by OJD. OJD has very strong views about the Hungarian literary scene. The whole educational system, including the universities, is full of cultural filth, smut, and imbecility, and therefore the government should intercede in the autonomy of the universities. OJD goes so far in one of his articles in Magyar Ideokas to suggest different rates of bad for good literature and for junk. In his opinion, it is outlandish that the government's generous 5% bat rate on books is also applicable to books he personally considers trash. L. Simon was truly horrified. Such a suggestion should never be uttered by anyone, L. Simon said. One could go on for pages and pages about OJD's outlandish ideas, but here I would like to bring up one exchange of particular significance. OJD expressed his dismay over an internet site called Shenhas.hu, which received some financial help from the government. OJD approached the editors with the request to publish certain authors from his state school of writers. They refused, which OJD found unacceptable. The government should suspend support of the site, suspend the editorial board, or simply sack the editors. At this point L. Simon raised his voice and asked whether someone should say something from party headquarters. I don't know how you guys have been socialized here in Transylvania, but let's not go in that direction, I beg you, in the mother country. Yes, both Sandor's attacks, who began the series of condemning articles on the Kulter Kampf, and Janos D.E. Akutenis Orban happen to be Transylvanian Hungarians who now, after settling in Hungary proper, are striking out at the lax domestic attitude toward writers who are not friends of the Orban government. I don't think that it is a secret that Hungarians, in Transylvania, most likely because of their minority status, are much more nationalistic and politically radical than Hungarians who were brought up in Hungary. With the exception of a few years, Transylvanian Hungarians have been living apart from the main body of their co-nationals for 100 years. Four generations have been grown up since. Naturally, they see the world differently, and these differences create friction, as it is clear from L. Simon's sharp words. The natives don't take too kindly to what they seemed to consider as interference. For now, the Transylvanian Hungarians have the Prime Minister's ear. The question is how far the government will take the Kulturkampf. July 26, 2018